Time to take off this valve cover and see what kind of damage we can find inside. This is an N20 engine that was seized. We were able to break it free with a big breaker bar. There's a lot of metal in the oil filter. So we're going to just take a look at the top end. We're going to pull the high pressure fuel pump off. We're going to pull the vacuum pump off. We're going to rip the valve cover off and start taking some bearing caps off to see what kind of issues may have happened inside of this engine. Stick around. Let's check it out. Another cold day, so I got my garage heater going. Something that you're going to need to take this apart, you're going to need a couple of tool sets I'd recommend is this VIM tool set, which is a torque set, and this nice hex set. And I use this a lot at work and easy to bring home. This is a quarter inch set. I will put a link in the description box if you're interested in these. All right, let's start by taking off the high pressure pump. Now you will have to take these lines off, but I have all of this already disconnected. And we are going to need a T30 to take off the two This is a mechanical high pressure pump, which just the bucket tap it overcomes the spring tension, which creates the pressure. This actually is a good high pressure pump from this particular engine. Um, we can see there's a couple of gaskets that need to be replaced when this is off. Um, there is not a lot of gunk on this. It is like a dark oil color. This car did have high mileage, so there's nothing really here that's giving us any indication of any specific failure. Now the high pressure pump does have its own gasket, so if you are replacing your high pressure pump, you do have to replace this gasket right here, which I'll just rip off. See, it is crunchy, so this is an old gasket. This is garbage. Now you have your little tap it slash piston here which you just pull out this way so you can take a look you just need a magnet um, if you do take this out there's a roller under here make sure the roller is good and you're putting it back in the right way there is a locator on the side and you can see right here there is a little tab so when you go in if you go in the wrong way it won't go in just rotate it until it matches up with the locator tab and that should slide in nice and easy. Now this little guy is actually driven by the camshaft, so we can pull this out and look inside that bore and take a look at the camshaft. So looking down in here, you can check to see if you can see any damage to your camshaft lobe. It actually looks pretty clean. I don't see any damage there either, but we'll know more once we get the valve cover off. I do have to take this gasket off here so that's just these e-torques screws here. So let me get some e-torques and we'll pop that off next. All right, let's pop the gasket off. You need an E6. It needs to come off. You don't have access to the Valvetronic motor just by taking the gasket off. But we need to take this off to remove the valve cover. You do need to take the Vano solenoids off on the front. This is also an E6. And I had a video on how to, how to test these. I'll put it up in the uh, upper section if you're interested in that video. But take those off and you can Pry these out gently. I've already had them off, so they came off a lot easier. They are swappable, so I don't need to worry about which is which. I have to take the vacuum pump off, so that's going to be a T27.
these are all the same size and the vacuum pump is actually driven off of the intake camshaft you can see right there that's how it creates vacuum so obviously when you go back back in you have to line that up when you pop it back on all right time to take the valve cover off i need an e10 and i just need to take all the bolts off so i'm going to do that now they are captured Trying not to get too much sun glare. The gasket's usually stuck on pretty good, so it's nice to have a leverage point to gently, slowly pry up. This is a good spot right here. Once you work the gasket free, a lot of these actually will end up like one or two threads hooked back on. Just kind of spin them off. And it helps release them. Let's take a look. So this valve cover looks nice and clean. No gunk buildup on the inside cover. No signs of moisture. That's a good sign. Well, with the valve cover off, let's just go around and take a look and see what we can see. Here's our intake and exhaust vanos units. Here's our timing chain guides here which I know we used a boroscope in another video and we checked to see if the guides were broken and we're looking down in here and it looks like we were correct the guides are not broken as far as I can see and everything looks good on this end as well so now we can take a look at the camshafts this is the exhaust camshaft here and everything looks pretty good here Nothing jumping out. I don't see any major scoring. There's some discoloration, which is normal. Let's take a look at the intake side. So these guys right here are intermediate levers. And here's your main ca camshaft for your intake camshaft here. And intermediate levers control the valves also using the Valvetronic motor. This is the Valvetronic motor. This is the only way to replace this motor is to take the valve cover off. And then it uses this helical cut gear to adjust. Now, just taking a look, we can see there are some signs of abuse just from improper maintenance. And that's what this gunk is, this thick, heavy sludge. So we do have sludge on cylinders one, two, some on three and four is pretty clean. So, looks like improper maintenance could be related to what's happening. Or when I showed you the oil filter, checking the oil filter video, it could be because that center cap was left off at a previous oil service. All right, now for the moment of truth, let's pull a bearing cap off and see what the bearing caps on the intake look like. Now you can do this by pulling one off at a time and then reinstalling it and moving to the next and the next and the next. You don't wanna take them all off because the spring tension is going to kick the camshaft out, but you can remove them one at a time and reinstall them and do a quick check to see if you have an issue with the bearing. Let's check cylinders four and three first. Usually if you have damage, it's usually towards the back of the cylinder head. So let's start with four, and this is a T30. Now if you're taking this off, take note. You can see there's some writing here and on the bottom. You want to make sure that you're putting this back in the same way. And now, moment of truth here. You can take a look at this bearing cap. All right, try to get this to focus. You can actually see there are striations in the bearing cap, and I can catch it with my finger. So this is where all of that metal is coming from, 
and we have evidence of engine damage right here. You cannot fix this. This is machined into the cylinder head. So if you have this failure and your bearing caps have all of these lines from improper oil pressure or maintenance, you can see those lines there, you are going to replace the cylinder head or you're replacing your engine. Let's take a look at the camshaft. So this is the camshaft side and if I run my finger over it there's a couple of spots where I can catch it. So there's some damage here too. This, again this is where I think a lot of that metal is coming from. It is starting to chew up the bearing caps themselves and that's getting into the oil filter which led to this engine locking up. Let's take a look at a few of the other bearing caps on the intake side and in a future video we're going to pull these um, these wells out here and we're going to remove the Valtronic motor and we're going to do a disassembly on this. We're going to pull the timing chain off, pull the vanish units out, show you how to time everything. We'll go through all of those steps uh, basically with this mock-up engine here so that if you're doing this yourself on your particular vehicle you'll be able to go ahead and do all of these steps and accomplish timing checks and Vanos replacements. All right, let's take a look at the other bearing caps. Before I take the other one off, and I'm not too worried about a torque spec at this point, I'm just gonna snug that down and we'll take off number three. So number three also shows some signs of damage. Now we know where some of that metal was coming from. We definitely have some internal engine damage at the top end. So this would need a cylinder head replacement. Now interestingly enough on an N55 engine you can actually have a similar, fault, similar issue and it sets a specific fault code. I'm going to have a video about that issue on an N55 that sets a fault code that could be a mixture issue or could be something going on with the top end of the engine. That's gonna be in an upcoming video. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. A lot more to come on this N20 engine. We're gonna be setting timing and doing a lot more disassembly and reassembly. And uh, join me as we go through an N20 engine. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you found this interesting. Please remember to subscribe to Ask Car Experts YouTube channel with a lot more videos to come.